So we have a 1927 Nash here. You don't see that very often. Kind of a uh, traditional hot rod style. Uh, Chris Casney, tell me about your 1927 Nash. Well, my 1927 Nash was basically, um, I found a part, the cowl, at the swap meet in Pomona and decided to make a car out of it. So everything, this is a swap meet put together, spend years finding the parts kind no, of project? I, no, no, I spent, I spent nine months building a car on the cheap, low budget, trying to do something that's unusual and um, that I can use to drive daily from Hollywood to Burbank. It's my daily driver too. A couple of things really stand out on this car as unusual. Your your uh, grill and the tail end of the car. They they don't look 27 Nash to me. <laughs> yeah, no, the grill is a, a 1920s, um, I was told, international tractor grill. And the rear section of the car is actually a 1952 Ford truck hood. And everything else I've made. So the truck hood, the shape of it, explains the, the boat tail on That's the back. That's exactly as the People told me, okay, this looks like a boat tail, a boat tail, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, let's call it the boat tail, you know. It is a boat tail now. And the power plant on this? Ford 302 motor, mid-70s. Not as traditional as, as uh, the purists don't like it too much, but uh, this is not a traditional car. I don't think you have too many 1927 Nash purists running around. I don't think I've ever seen a 1927 Nash before or know anybody who has. A car like this with that motor, I'm, what do you have, about uh, 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds a car here? I don't know. It's really light. I mean, it, it moves. So 302 is totally adequate. That thing just like blows everybody out of the water. And uh, I get 25 miles a gallon out of it too, so I got it all. Uh -huh. It's almost green. It's, it's my little hybrid here. <laughs> the hobby has changed in the last 10 years or so where cars, there's, I've never seen a car that looks just like this, but lots of similar cars, right. the old traditional um, trend in the hobby or the rat rod, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. has been, I think, a really positive influence on the hobby. To me, it tells people just relax and enjoy yourself build That's something exactly that doesn't right. yeah. uh, what's your feeling on that and and did you start out lusting after 57 chevs that were trailer queens and ended absolutely up here absolutely not that says absolutely not what it's all about i think what's what, it, what it's come down to the last 10 years is like people are starting to build their own cars again and 10 years ago it was like or from what when i went to car shows 10 15 years ago it was like people would show up with these high dollar cars that they had no part in building and now all the young guys first of all can't afford these cars and now they want to build their own thing with their own hands and 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 take pride in that because that's what it's all about in hot rodding making your own thing what do you think about people that take a brand new fiberglass 32 ford body and all brand new parts and add the patina, add the dirt, add the age and, and make it look like it's an old beat up hot rod. What's your feeling? Well, I've seen many of those that look all right, but uh, I sh the car doesn't have soul. Yeah, that's that's if, a... If you want a fiberglass car, that's fine. And the 32, you can't even, I mean, you can't afford a steel body, original steel bodies out of the question. Uh, but um, I don't know, it's not for me. Fiberglass is not my thing. This particular one, you added the back end, the boat tail right. with the, the truck uh, hood, and you dropped in some new sides on it. How how much, how many pieces are there? I mean, do we have the, you have the front cow, you have the back end, and then you have a, a four other pieces or a hundred other other pieces? Well, I what I had to do is basically shape um, what wasn't there. I had very minimal parts. I had the the the, the hood I used for the rear, the cowl. I had door, I actually made doors for this. I had originally had two doors I made and then my wife, um, I saw my wife one time at my shop climbing over the doors and, and over the side of it and I'm like, okay, I guess we don't need doors, so I welded them shut. Um, there's a couple other parts, small, like the rear sections are um, sheet metal, but other than that, I mean, uh, there's not much to it. And the final touch, this may have to do with your uh, trade, uh, your, your windshield posts yeah. or, or handsome pieces of wood. How'd that come Thank about? Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm a furniture maker by trade, so I was trying to find um, a nice aluminum Duval style windshield frame. Couldn't find anything that would fit or looked right to me or 
I could afford for that matter. So I was like, okay, screw this, I'm making my own. And I spent like two days make, shaping these pieces and there we go, custom windshield frame. Yeah. Well, Chris, uh, it was a good choice. It's a beautiful car. Congratulations on uh, really building your own car and not spending the, the family fortune on it. And thank you for being on the Vintage Vehicle thank Show. Thank you so much.